How's it going everyone? This is Mike. Welcome back to my channel. It's been about three weeks since I've done a video. I wanted to talk to you about a film festival that I went to last weekend. It was called the Great River Film Festival. It was in Quincy, Illinois, which is on the west side of Illinois, right next to the Mississippi River. And since I live basically in East Central Illinois, it was about a three and a half hour drive for me. Very pleasant. Uh, Quincy, Illinois is a relatively small city of about 40,000. I'd never been there before. And uh, it took place at a very nice hotel close to the river. And I was staying at a motel across the street, which was a little cheaper. So it was a good thing for me. And I, I really had a nice time. So it was the first festival that these people had put on. So it was very small, very quiet and laid back. I have no idea how many people were attending, but it wasn't, it didn't seem like it was droves of people all the time. But um, what they did was they had three conference rooms in the hotel that they, that they used. One had room for uh, several tables of uh, celebrities to sit around and, and, you know, sell autographs, pictures and all that. And then around the walls, they had, along the walls, they had three, maybe four dealers. So as I said, it was very small. There wasn't a lot of stuff to buy, but what they had was, uh, well, they had some stuff that I really, I really was happy to get. So, and then there were also two other rooms that they used as viewing rooms to watch old B movies and a couple that weren't exactly B movies. And if you know what Alpha Video is, the, the movies from uh, Alpha Video, the sort of a lot of obscure films that you can't find anywhere else and, and they're not always uh, the best copies, the best uh, imagery in the films. That's what they use. They use the Alpha Video DVDs for all of these films, which is okay with me. And most of them were actually pretty good, pretty good to look at. So I, I wasn't complaining. And I ended up seeing six films. Uh, the, I'll tell you about the films that I saw first. I saw um, a film called, well, let's see now, wait a minute. Jungle Siren, yeah, from the early 1940s. Jungle Siren, starring Buster Crab and Ann Corio. Yeah, very cool. Which is the only one of these that turns out I had seen before. I have a copy of it upstairs. Then I saw a, a really terrific film noir slash gangster movie that I'd never seen before called Kansas City Confidential. A really good movie with John Payne, Lee Van Cleef, Colleen Gray. I was surprised at how good this was. So I ended up sending away for, a, they have a Blu-ray out. I just found out that there, were, there was a Blu-ray available. So I just sent away for that last night. Then I saw a film from the late 1940s called Parole Incorporated with Michael O'Shea and Evelyn Ankers from the uh, Universal Horror Film. So it was really a lot of fun to watch her. Then another one from the late 1930s, Gangster's Boy, starring Jackie Cooper. That was fun. Then the next day I saw two movies. This was on um, Friday. The convention was Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So on um, Friday morning, I watched Love Laughs at Andy Hardy, starring Mickey Rooney. And then finally, um, a, a film that was certainly not a B film at all, Two Women, starring Sophia Loren, directed by Vittorio De Sica from 1961, the film for which she won the Best Actress Award, uh, the Academy Award. I had never seen it before. It was fantastic, really fantastic, and now I would like to get a copy of it. There were a lot of other films that were available, and uh, I probably would have watched more, but quite frankly, I just I got tired of sitting in one position and not being able to move. I just had to get up and walk around. So anyway, the next, the uh, on Saturday, which is the day, I wasn't there Saturday because I ended up leaving on uh, Friday night, but they showed a lot of episodes of television shows during the Saturday uh, portion. So that would have been kind of fun, but I, I wanted to get home. So they had a lot of celebrities. Well, several, not a lot. They had people like uh, Patrick Wayne, who was John Wayne's son, also a prolific actor in his own right. They had uh, Buck Taylor from Gunsmoke. They had an, an actress named Terry Moore, who was in a lot of films in the 1950s. Uh, for genre fans, you might remember uh, Mighty Joe Young. She was in that movie. <coughs> Excuse me. She was probably the biggest name that they had there. They had an actress named Linda Day George, who was mainly on television during the 1960s and was the wife of uh, Christopher George. And uh, they had an actress named Kim Lankford. I had no idea who she was. Had no idea. I don't think I've ever seen that name before. Kim Lankford. Maybe some of you know who she is. 
But the one person I, I was really happy to see is an actor named Warren Berlinger. Might be pronounced Berlinger. Uh, he was a, sort of a character actor, supporting actor in films going all the way back in the 1950s. Um, made a lot of teenage-oriented films, uh, even when he was long past being in teenage. He was in one of my favorite films called Teenage Rebel, 1956, starring Ginger Rogers and Michael Rennie. He was in that with um, this young actress here. This is his autograph that he gave me. This young actress is a, a girl named Betty Lou Kime. I think that was also her first film. And Warren Berlinger and Betty Lou Kime, um, they fell in love during the making of this film and they got married not long after. And they were married for nearly 50 years and had four children before she passed away not that long, not that long ago. And he spoke very highly of her and you could tell he was still very much in love with her. Uh, I, I talked to Warren Berlinger for about, I keep going, Berlinger, Berlinger, whatever, Warren. I talked to him for about 10 minutes. He was a lot of fun. He had great stories about some of the people he worked with, like Ginger Rogers and Patricia Neal. And uh, here's a picture of him with Annette Funicello in a 1967 film called Thunder Alley. And you can see that Annette's hair is piled up so high that the uh, camera couldn't get it all. And her uh, autograph was already on the picture. And he said that was her authentic signature. I'm not sure where he got this, but it does look like her signature because I've seen it before. But yeah, that was that was a very cool movie that I've always liked. So I had a great time talking to him. The only other autograph that I got was from Patrick Wayne. So I got this. He was really nice. We didn't talk very long, but he was a very nice guy. Looked terrific. I didn't want to spend a lot of money on autographs since a lot of these people I wasn't that interested in. The Great River Film Festival was supposed to have even more people, but they ended up canceling right before the, the festival happened. They were supposed to have James Darren. I was looking forward to seeing him. Uh, Fred Williamson was supposed to come. Lee Merriweather. Uh, Clue Gulliger was supposed to be there. And there were several other names that I, I can't remember right now, but uh, those people didn't make it. But I'm very happy that I met the people that I did. Uh, so here's what I bought from the dealers. There was a guy that was selling old copies of um, the uh, Psychotronic magazine. I ended up buying seven copies of that. Uh, Psychotronic from the 1990s. I've never seen this magazine before. I, for some reason, it never crossed into my radar. It wasn't for sale where I live, but this will be fun to look through. Brain that wouldn't die. Here we go. Tura Satana from uh, Astro Zombies. And uh, there's an interview with her in there. Also, I have picked up three copies of Midnight Marquee, which is kind of a nice uh, genre magazine. Check out the back of that. Attention, DVD collector, 1974. All right. Here's another one. They have great artwork. And here's one with Peter Laurie on the cover. Wow. All right. And one more magazine I bought from this guy. He had this um, issue of Take One, which I never heard of, from the year 1977. And it actually has an interview with Nicholas Ray. So I think that was only a couple years before Nicholas Ray uh, died. I think he died in 1979. I'm not sure, but that'll be fun to read. All right. Then I, uh, there was a guy that was selling quite a few DVDs. A lot of them were old westerns, which I wasn't terribly interested in. But he also had two long rows of uh, serials from the 1930s all the way up to the 1950s, which I love. So I picked up uh, seven of these. All right. Hawk of the Wilderness with uh, Herman Bricks, who later changed his name to Bruce Bennett. This is back in the 1930s. They were actually showing this at another convention I went to earlier this year called Cinevent. And I tried to catch all the chapters of it, and I missed the last two, so I need to find out what happened. Here's one called Neoka and the Tiger Men, starring Kay Aldrich and Clayton Moore, the Lone Ranger. Ooh. Here's one called Jungle Jim. What do you think about that? Brenda Starr, reporter from the 1940s. Uh, Joan Woodbury as Brenda Starr, co-starring Kane Richmond. Here is Flying Disc Man from Mars, which supposedly is a virtual remake of The Purple Monster Strikes. So we shall find out. And finally, I bought, this is a compilation of 37 serial trailers from Republic Studios. So that'll be a lot of fun. And I bought one more thing by this guy. 
I uh, picked this up right at the last second because I just saw it and I thought, oh, I'm not going to pass that up. $7.50, this box set of three films starring Vincent Price. Very nice box. It has uh, Tales of Terror, The Raven, and The Pit and the Pendulum. Now, of course, I already have all these, which turned out to be a good thing because, um, you know, here's a nice brochure, which is nice to have. Very colorful. Anyway, so here's the box with the disc, right? Opened it up. When I got back to my hotel room, nothing in it. I laughed. I, re I really did start laughing. I wasn't even disappointed. Uh, there's no way in the world this guy was trying to te uh, cheat me. I think he probably just picked this up from another dealer and then didn't even bother to open it. But I made sure that I opened all of my other things that I bought from him to see if there was actually something in there. And there, there were, was in each one. But anyway, yeah, I did. I thought this was funny. So I have a nice uh, empty DVD box that I can use for something else. Meanwhile, um, I have this other Vincent Price compilation DVD with four films, Pit and the Pendulum, Tales of Terror, Mask of the Red Death, and Madhouse. So I can use this box for this. And all of you purists, don't give me any grief. It's pretty much like the original, so I'm happy. Anyway, anyway, that's the Great River Film Festival from uh, Quincy, Illinois, uh, the inaugural festival, and I hope if any of the people who, who put this on happen to see this video, I just want you to know that you guys did a great job. People were very friendly, and um, I hope that you come back next year. I hope it's uh, bigger and more successful. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And if you happen to go to this festival, um, let me know. Maybe I uh, talk to you. You never know.